Joshua chapter 7. The first city is down in Cana. Second. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. Now back to chapter 6 verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed thing. Least ye make yourselves accursed. When you take of the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold. So there's a trespass. Committed a trespass against the cursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zibdi, the son of Zerariah. Of the tribe of Judah, that's where Jesus Christ comes from, took of the cursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now we're not going to know what this cursed thing in this chapter until the very end. And there's a particular reason. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. That's the next city. Number two. Which is besides Beth Avon on the east side of Bethel. We know where Bethel is. And snake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. These spies again. Go in and see what see what we're up against. Uh, we are ten miles west of Jericho now, approximately. We're moving east to west. And notice how Israel is moving against the sunrise. They are in the land. They haven't had no sunrise service. Matter of fact, it's the sun going down east to west. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor there or thither, for they are but few. There's no prayer. There's self-confidence. Look how well we did in Jericho. We'll do it in AI. We don't need everybody. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men. And they fled before the men of AI. They're running. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. Thirty-six men have died already now because of one man named Achan. Thirty-six men. For they chased them from before the gate. They walked right up, they walked right up to the gate of Ai. And when they walked up to the gate, they're chased from that gate even unto Shebrim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. We weren't supposed to lose. Now remember the side note of 7-1 is no one else knows what happened. There's only one man in probably his family that knows what they did and they're not even being accounted for their sin. We conquered Jericho. We moved 10 miles. Now we're up to the next city. Why did we lose? What on earth happened? And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord unto even. I don't know, we don't know how long it is. The sun's going down. Joshua is on his face before the ark. He and the elders of Israel, not just him alone, and put dust upon their heads. They're, they're dumbfounded. What just happened? They are repenting of what they don't even know what they're repenting of to say, God, look at us. We're just dust and ashes. What? happened where'd you go and joshua said alas oh lord
Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people out of Jordan? All right, so now he's blaming God. God, you made us lose. O oh, Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan? Why are we over here if we lost? To deliver us into the hand of the Amorites. So here's the people of the land, the Amorites. To destroy us. Is 36 people really destroyed? <laughs> You're the one that went in there with no prayer. You're the one. Oh, look how great we are. I don't know, I, maybe I shouldn't, I'll probably make it later on, but I don't know what the percentage of 36 men out of 3,000, but you know, it's, but they lost, and they weren't supposed to lo lose, and what, haven't Joshua got the fact is, I don't mean to pick on Joshua, but let's pick on him. All that Moses wrote, if if you do this, if you do this, and you properly do this, and you walk in a way that I I have you to walk, you're you're not going to fail. I will be forever with you, and blah 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 blah. Right? That's all Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's all been the story, and that's been Joshua chapter one. If you walk in me, I will be with you. Uh, So here they're mourning before the ark. Of the, shouldn't Joshua got the fact is, you know what? Wait a minute. Hold on. If God is against us, it's not God's fault. Somebody is in trouble with God. Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us in the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwell on the other side, Jordan. What on you, earth are you saying, Joshua? Reuben, Gad, and half tribe of Manasseh stayed on the other side of that river, and they're the first ones to go in captivity. That is not where God has told you. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, what is your problem? We can go in that land and conquer it, you and Caleb. And you got to wonder, where, where is Caleb around here? He's probably one of those elders. You realize him and Joshua are the oldest ones in this crew. I think Phineas. So he loses faith. And it wasn't a physical problem here. It's a spiritual problem. Joshua has the men. He has the numbers. But he lost because verse 1. He doesn't know about verse 1. Of sin. And sin can destroy your walk, and you may not even know what's going on. There may be sin in your church. There may be sin in your family. And you're going along, and you run smack into a wall, and you're like, what was that? It was a wall. It was a wall put there by God. There's trouble. Instead of getting on your knees and saying, God, what did you do? God, why do God this, God that? Say, God, what on earth is the trouble here? Now, remember, these men came to the gate of the city. There's a, there's a doorway in the, in the wall. And I'm going to tell you, that this happens, and I know it happened, because I prayed a prayer one time, and my family said, Lord, there is trouble in this house, and, and God revealed it. Who, what, where, when, and you don't need to know that. And I know that time or opportunity that God, if you have this problem that Joshua's going for right now, and you seek God instead of blaming God, he will show you. So, Josh, Joshua goes on, Oh Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turns their backs before their enemies, <laughs> Israel's going to run away. I don't know. They haven't ran yet. 
Israel ran away from King Saul, but he was a wicked ruler and blah, blah, everything there. Joshua is right. It's just something's wrong. And we go blaming God. Adam, what's the trouble? That's the woman that you gave me. Did you get that? That you gave me. What? We're always blaming God for our troubles. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it. That's true. Just go ask Rahab. <laughs> and shall environ surround us. Look, the word environ is in the Bible. And it has nothing to do with, with the earth. And the climate control. They're going to surround us. Environment. Environ us around. And cut off our name from the earth. Now, is that what God promised them? That they will go in the promised land and they will die and they never become a people again? That's not the promise. But there's still an issue. And Joshua has no idea what it is. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? So he's losing faith. And the Lord... Look at verse 7. O Lord, capital L-O-R-D, capital G-O-D. Verse 10, the Holy Spirit says, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. God the Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, Jesus Christ, step in and says unto Joshua, get thee up. Get off your face. Wouldn't you think if, if you were really seriously in trouble, I mean, let's say the doctor came to you and said, listen, you know what? It's terminal. Wouldn't you think God would be pleased if you were on your knees praying? You get a bad phone call for somebody you care about. Wouldn't you God be pleased that you're on your knees? And God tells him, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face uh god we just lost the war here we are in trouble don't you want me praying to you and we're going to see books later on lord willing i don't know how when the lord comes or calls us home whatever we're going to see with jeremiah god's going to tell jeremiah don't you even pray for them i'm not going to listen to your prayer and god is so angry what we know so far because of one man. Israel has sinned. Okay, Joshua, that's the trouble. Israel has sinned. Now Joshua's getting up. He's wiped out. Okay, I know what the problem is now. It's not you, God. It's them. Now reality has kicked in for Joshua. Don't you think he would be thinking in his head right now? The Moses, who he was a minister of, all the problems that they, they gave Moses, here we are back again. Why didn't Joshua think about that? Why are these fiery serpents biting the butts of the people? Because they sin. Why is God opening the ground for these group of people and swallowing them up into the earth? Because they sin. Why are all these things happening in the wilderness? Because they sin. Joshua wasn't thinking about that. Joshua didn't go back to his, his uh, memoir of Moses and say, the people got in trouble. We did not get right because the people sinned. Joshua should have known with his working with Moses. Now I, I hear dancing or a fight or something down there, Moses. Uh, no, it is them having a calf and watching Moses get angry. And getting God angry. Joshua was right there on the mountain when Moses came down and broke those those table those two tables. Joshua was right there. Who sinned? The people. But now, see, Moses is gone. Now Joshua's in charge. And now he's had his first conflict with the children of Israel. This is the first time that they've done something wrong on his account. And God, it's your fault. Moses did that. 
He goes up before the children of Israel. I am here. I'm sent by God. The I.N. sent me by. All right. Great. And Pharaoh says, you're going to make more bricks. I ain't going to give you no more hay. And he's walking away from, from Pharaoh and the children of Israel. Going, May God kill you. You idiot. Look what you've done to us. He turns to God and says, God, what did you do? <laughs> and God already told Moses what was going to happen. Israel has sinned. Sin brings death. Joshua 7, 5, 1, and 11, the wages of sin is death. Thank you for teaching us that, Joshua. Before, before even long before the Apostle Paul was ever even thought of by his parents, and his parents ever to be thought of, that we read the wages of sin is death by Achan. There's just no gift of God right now. There will be no gift of God for Achan. Do you see what the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament? If I sin, I can come to the blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can confess my sins and I can be saved if I, of my heart, repent of my sins. I have a gift of God. I have hope of eternal life. The wages of sin for me is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Old Testament, the wages of sin is death. And... And what? Ink is going to die. He's going to go to hell. And we're going to see him going to hell over the most stupidest thing. Three things. So Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Wait a minute. Wasn't it just one man? Remember, Israel, the Old Testament is a nation, is a corporate, it's not one person. Achan did not do this on the backside of a mountain anywhere. There are other people who knew what was going on. And the law prescribed that you were to bring that man and bring him to the officials and tell what had happened. Which I commended him, for they have even, okay, here we go, taken of the accursed thing, have also stolen. All right, let's look at 618 again. And ye in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourself accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel Make the camp. See, God already warned Joshua. So when somebody comes up to you, and I've had this thing, I just taken it. All I did was take a pencil. I took something. Even taken the cursed thing and have also stolen. Taken is stolen. And in the law, the, the great Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. And this, this is, this is, yeah, disassembled. That's the first time that word shows up. Acts 5, 1 and 2 and Hebrews 4, 13. Awesome. And they have put it even among their own stuff. It's mine. When God told them 618, no, it's not. Leave it alone. So now Joshua knows. He knows there's a sin. He just doesn't know who. And when God says the entire congregation of Israel, he probably slapped himself in the head and said, oh man. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. And wait till you see what the, these three things are, that why we are in the predicament we are in right now. Forget reading Joshua 7, and, may, and if you're hearing this, you never ever finished jo Joshua 7 yet. Just think in your mind, what could be the, the, this cursed thing that was stolen? That 36 men have already died. Wow, I mean, I mean, what do you think? He stole an idol, an image, a, 
a, a, a god statue or something? I mean, really? I mean, make God that mad? What could that be? Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies. That's exactly what happened early in this chapter. Because they, they were accursed. Aren't you glad you are under grace and that God does not say today in 2008, well, just because you are American and America has sinned, you have sinned. And because America is a curse, you're, aren't you glad that God does not say that to you? And I'll tell you what God says in the church age. I'm trying to separate you from the Old Testament from the church age because people will try to put you back. I'll tell you what God says today to me. I'm saved. God says, you're not American no more. You're a Christian. Your home is New Jerusalem, but you're just a pilgrim. And you see the trouble is when you say, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm so glad to be American and wave the flag. And then God says, okay, maybe God said, okay, fine. And you can be in reference with the sins of that nation you want. Uh, you can be of New Jerusalem and have no sins. But you want to be America, and you want red, white, and blue, and Constitution, and, and you know, and I'm I am American, and probably I got my I got the flag, I got the guns, and I got the Bible. And God says, okay, fine. Why does the Bible always last? I'll just associate you with America then. This entire nation is under a curse because of how many people? One. What's the story here? Behind me, there's a hospital. My wife is in great pain with a, a, a spine that's all crooked because of MRSA. My feet are not feet anymore because of diabetes. I am missing a toe. You say, well, what's that have to do with here? This is all because of one man. God told him, do not eat of that fruit. And he ate of that fruit. This one man sinned. So let's go back to Romans 6.23. The wages, plural, of sin, singular, is death. Achan becomes a type of sin. One sin. And then when Jesus Christ comes, the gift of God was, the gift of God was, for wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when he shows up with John the Baptist, behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Our sin that ruins everybody is one particular sin. And all our sins, don't, I don't care if it's adultery, I don't care if you're telling a lie, I don't care if you stole pencils from your job or a cookie from your mother. It comes down to what God said and you disobeying it. That's the sin. So one man, one sin, wherefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies. Aren't their enemies just as worse as what Israel is? They don't have God. God is absent. God is far from these people. But God is holy. Because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. That's the God that told the Christian, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Aren't you glad you're under grace? Aren't you glad that we have 1 John 1, 9? Under the law, and let me get this straight, Achan did not commit adultery. He did not murder. He stole. 
one of the Ten Commandments, just as much murder is one of the Ten Commandments, just as much as uh, adultery is one of the Ten Commandments. One of the Ten Commandments is he stole. And he's not even going to lie about it. And God says, I can't be with you anymore. That's the law. 36 men have died because of this one man. Except he destroy the accursed from among you. All right, so here is something. Here is a way. And the way is not Jesus Christ. The truth is not Jesus Christ. And the life is not Jesus Christ. You take that thing that was stolen from me and you destroy it. Now, we do know the story. Does Joshua do that? He does. But Achan still dies and goes to hell. Up! Is he still on his face? Up! Sanctify, set apart the people. And say, sanctify, set apart yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thy enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Now why did God say tomorrow? God has given Achan an ability to come up to Joshua and say, tap him on the shoulder, Joshua, yeah, who are you? I'm Achan. Yeah, what do you want? I got, I got a big problem right here. Yeah, I know, I'm the problem. What? That cursed thing, it, it was me. What do you think God would have done if Achan came that night? Before we finish the book of the, the chapter, what do you think God would have done if Achan came up and said, yeah, it's me, I'm sorry. Let's call Joshua again. Let's get the priest again. Let's speak to God. I am confessing. I, I'll bring it to you. Here it is. What do you think God would have done? We don't know because this doesn't happen. Verse 14. In the morning, there, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. God knows he's not. God's given the opportunity, but he's not coming. Achan has a free will just as much as Adam has a free will. God has given him to come up and confess. And we don't know what would happen because he doesn't do it. According to your tribes, there's 12 tribes. And it shall be that the tribes which the Lord taketh shall come. According to the families, families is next, tribes, families. Thereof in the family which the Lord shall take shall come. By households, next is household. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come. Man by man. So it goes tribes, families, household, man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. That's hell. You get burned with fire on this earth and you'll wake up in fire. Ha! He and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant. That's the word of God. That's the law. That's God's setting. You're to obey everything I tell you to do of the Lord. And because he has wrought folly in Israel, that 36 men have already died. That's kind of folly, wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think those grieving wives and mothers and fathers and children, those 36 men, don't you think they're going to be a little, what did you do? You mean my husband, my father, my son died because of that? That is so stupid. Folly. Verse 16. So Joshua rose up early in the morning. That's amazing how they all get up early in the morning. And brought Israel by their tribes. Okay, here's all the 12 tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. All right, 11 tribes walk away. Wasn't us. <laughs> And he brought the family of Judah 
And you can find that through X's and uh, numbers and all that. The, if you want to go back and find out how many families there were. All right, so let's look at the picture here. All right, all the tribes here. Here's 12 of them. Judah. 11 back off. Aiken's in that group right now. God is still giving him opportunity to come forth. But everything's okay. Yeah, 11 tribes are gone, but there's still a lot of us here in Judah. And he brought forth the family of Judah. And he took the family of the Zerites. Well, there's one family gone out of Judah, but I, I'm, no one's going to know it's me. I'm okay. Come on, Aiken. Come out of that group and repent. God's giving you, he's giving you overnight, and now he, he's giving you time. And he took the family of Zerites, and he brought the family of Zerites man by man. And Zadbadai was taken. We're getting close. We are now actually in the close family of Aiken. Aiken, you better do something now or you're done. And he brought his household man by man. And Aiken, the son of Carmi. So here's here comes the family. Carmi, bring your family up. And there's Carmi's family. His wife, his children. Aiken's still in that group right there and he still has time. The son of Zabdi, the son of Zer of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now we just got the line there. The tribe of, was Judah, the family was of Zerdi, the household was of Carmi, and then Achan. There, there it is right there. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, Joshua does not know who's done it. Joshua doesn't even know what it is. All he knows is a cursed thing. Now here's Achan standing before him, my son. Give, I pray thee, the glory to the Lord God of Israel. Make confession. That's the first time confession shows up in the Bible. And it's Joshua, Jehovah saves, talking to a sinner. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And what does confession do? It gives glory to the Lord God of Israel. That's what confession does. Now, Achan is not talking to no priest. And tell me now what thou hast done. Joshua has no idea. There's this cursed thing. Now here's this one man standing in front of him. And Joshua's like, you in trouble. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Now this is not on Achan's own will. Achan had all night. When Judah was called up, he could have got right. When the families were called up, he could have got right. When the household got called up, he could have got right. And he's standing now before Joshua. He it's too late. And at the great white zone judgment, <laughs> we'll break it down, you know, of, I don't know, of countries, of states, of nations, and it's going to get down to your family. And God's going to say uh, your last name, <laughs> and your family, your last name is going to come up, then he's going to start naming you one by one. And you're going to stand before Joshua, you're going to stand before Jesus, Jehovah say, and you're going to tell Jesus what you've done. You don't believe that? Lord, didn't we eat in your presence? Lord, didn't we do this in your presence? Lord, weren't we when you were here? And what will be the answer that he will give? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Do you think Joshua knew who Achan was? I don't think so. It's not given. Man, we see the wages of sin is death, and we see the great white throne judgment with Joshua Jesus right there talking one-on-one -on -one with one sinner. Aren't you glad time stops before the great white throne judgment? 
You mentioned how long it would be if the clock ticked for every human since Adam that is not saved, that has not done what God, many that went the broad way, stand before, can you imagine how long that would be when it's one sinner with Jesus Christ, one-on-one -on -one talking? Achan's mother's not here, his father's not here, his priest is not here. It's just Achan and Joshua. Now what'd you do? Indeed, I've sinned. I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. That's not from the heart. That's just a confession. And thus and thus have I done. <laughs> What's the thus and thus? What's the thus and thus? I believe the Holy Spirit recorded exactly and thus and thus. That's his attitude. I've done the thus and thus. When I saw among the spoils, now here we go, ready? I saw among the spoils, that wasn't yours, was it? God says everything that, that's in that city belongs to me. A goodly, oh, what could it be? What could it cause 36 men to die and Achan's life now destroyed? What could it be? A goodly what? Babylonian garment. Really? Was it a pants? Was it was it a suit? Was it just a shirt? Was it a jacket? It's a garment. Babylonian. It doesn't even belong there in Jericho. It belongs back in Babylon. <laughs> and two hundred shekels of silver. Wow. And a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. That's it? A garment, silver, and gold. That's the cursed thing. Why is it a curse? Because it belongs to God. Now, I'm not going to go, you know, if you don't give your silver to gold and give a tithe, that's not what that is. God told them when they go into Jericho, everything belongs to God. Let's go back to 18. Chapter 6, verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed thing. Least you make yourselves accursed, like he just done. When ye take of the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse, we've read about that, and trouble it. We'll find that in a moment. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. It is not yours, Achan. What you did was, it's not the garment. It's not the gold. It's the silver. It's you stole from God. Then, I coveted them. Oh, that's one of the commandments. Thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not covet. I'll give Aiken, I'll give Aiken one credit here. And Paul. Now, I don't have that verse. These are the two men that ever admitted they ever coveted. Paul said, have I not known lust? It's like I coveted. It. And that's in Romans. It's that verse I forget. Here he can actually come out and say, I covered it. Look at that confession. I covered it. I coveted them. And took them. Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not steal. There it is. There's his two great sins. And behold, they are, what can you do with it, Achan? Hid in the earth. In the midst of my tent. And the silver is under it. Wow, you can't even show it to the people. Now let's go back to Genesis 31, 34. This happened another time. 
And you got to wonder about this gold and silver. Is it in relation to Genesis 31, 34? Now, I'm going to tell you, Achan did not lie. He did not bear a false witness. I can't say that for Rachel. Now, Rachel had taken the images, pictures, idols, and put them in the camel's furniture. Oh, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord, that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is... That's a lie. I know, yeah, you're pregnant, but you can't get up. I've known many pregnant women in my life, and I've never, ever heard any of them Except for 1% of them say, I can't get up. And the 1%, they've had a physical thing where the doctor said, you know, in danger of that baby. But she's not in danger of that baby. She's, she lies about her thing. And Aiken says, hey, it, it, this is where it is. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent. That tent is portable. That tent would be packed up and moved on to the next area. He would have the only spot where his tent was where there would be a hole and a mound of dirt. Wouldn't that be a little suspicious? Gopher. And behold, it was hid in his tent. And the silver under it, I would wonder if he valued the silver that he put it deeper so it would not be found. It's kind of stupid because you got to pack up and go if you were not caught. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Everybody look. We need witnesses. The nation of Israel has witnessed these things. And you can imagine the people stretch. That's it? That is his crime? I can see somebody coming up to the egg and smack him across the head. You idiot. But I got a warp mine. And Joshua and all Israel with him, with Joshua. They stood on Joshua's side. Look at that one. All Israel. I don't even think that ever said anything with Moses, all Israel. With, with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment. It doesn't even say Babylonian garment. It just says the garment, whatever that thing is. And throughout the Bible, it could have been anything. And the wedge of gold. All right. That's okay. And his sons. Uh-oh. And his daughters. I'm going to assume, and I can be wrong, that they knew something about it. So, 36 men with sons, plural, and daughters, plural. There's a lot more than 36 people who are going to die because of Achan. I'm not counting Achan in that number because he, for his sin. But God says, the father shall not be put to death for the children, and the children shall not be put to death to the father. Here are his sons and daughters, so they had to know, or God would violate his own scriptures. But you got there, Dad. I got some gold and silver and a, and a garment. Well, that's nice. Where'd you get it? I got it from Jericho. Oh, okay. And his oxen? And his asses? And his sheep? And his tent? <laughs> and all that he had. And there's no mention of a wife. I don't know where she is or what happened to her, but there's no mention. Everything. I would assume that his wife was not living. Joshua. Now God told Joshua, verse 15, and shall be that he, 
Aiken, that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he has. So this is prescribed by God. God is so angry. This unity of a nation of people is so much that everything that he owns. And people will say, well, it's vile. It's wicked. You know, look, look how mean God is. No, look how sin, the cancer, destroyed this family. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? And, and go back to 618. Look at the word trouble. And trouble it. Joshua is a prophet. It has all happened. Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall the Lord shall trouble thee this day. Yeah, I'm gonna put you in hell. You know what, you know what Joshua just said? You know what John the Baptist says? He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Joshua said it's trouble. The, the rich man that's in hell says torments. And the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. After they stoned them with stones, all right, so they burned him after they stoned him. But being stoned to death is not a pretty picture either. That had to hurt. You ever smack your thumb with a with a with a uh, hammer? Doesn't it just feel so good? Have you ever had somebody accidentally hit you in the head with a rock? You know, I remember a few, many times that when you go to the lake or the river or, you know, the swimming hole and someone throws a rock and you are in the water when they try to skip the stone and they skip it off your forehead. I don't know how many times I've had that happen. I've worked in the, in the garden with my mom and dad and they'll throw stones and I'm just in the wrong place. It hurts. And can you imagine them doing it until you did? And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. I, I, haven't, I haven't searched this on the internet. I, just think about it. how one of archaeologists have found this. So the Lord turned the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of the place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Now, you're not going to find that Babylonian garment because it was burned. That gold was melted. The silver was melted. But we do have this type of story kind of in Acts chapter 5. It's not the same, but still kind of the same on the anger of God. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. And now we're going to see a husband and wife get God angry. And they are going to lie. And they're going to steal. Acts 5 1. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession. They sold property. They got X amount of dollars. What's wrong with that? And kept back part of the price. So let's say ten thousand dollars. They're going to give the Lord five thousand. His wife also being privy to it, she knows exactly what happened. And brought a certain part, five thousand, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Oh wow! Do you see? And nice effect. They sold that property for five thousand dollars, and they laid it at the apostles' feet. Oh, you guys are so great! No. Even they sold it for six thousand. No, well, it's five thousand. Sold it for five thousand. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? So lying is a sin. You are lying to the Holy Ghost. Better watch your stories. To keep back part of the price of land. 
It's not what you got for full. You told them that's what you got, but that's not what you got. While it remained, was it not thy own? You could have kept it. You could have came up and gave us a nickel. And it, you, didn't, you didn't have to give us anything. But everybody else is doing it. Look at verse 37 of verse 4, uh, chapter 4. Having laid, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And people would be, wow, look at this. Look at this. And I so fear, like, ooh, we'll get praised too. But we'll just hold some back for us. Retirement day, rainy day. And keep back part of the price of land. While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. What's the Jehovah Witness say about the Holy Spirit? Is it God? Because look what Peter said in verse 3. You lied unto the Holy Ghost. Verse 4, you lied unto God. Uh-oh, God is the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is God. Chapter 5. Let's see what happens. And I was hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard it. He dies. He's not stoned. He's not burnt. He just has a heart attack. He has a coronary so a stroke, whatever. Or God just says, hit the ground, guy. It's your time. Wow. We had more of that happen in the church age today. The church would be correct. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Almost like Joshua. He had no idea. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Lie. And then Peter said unto him, How is it? That ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord. There's the Holy Spirit and God. Scripture is Scripture. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door. Almost like they're waiting for it to, to take care of her. And, sh and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. Young men came in, found her dead, and carried her forth and brought her and buried her by her husband. That's a severe case of lying. And it brought death. Achan was coveting and stealing, and that brought death. You know what Rachel's cause was in Genesis? It brought great damnation to Jacob because later on, Jacob's on his journeys, and everybody has images, and he's got to bury them under an oak tree. Before he moves on. Aiken. It put it right in the butt. It's done. It's gone with. Everybody's learned a lesson. Let's move on. We're not going to do that again. Uh, Ananias Sophia. Oh man, where, man. Did you know what they did? I ain't doing that. I ain't dying. I'm going to be honest. Don't you dare lie to Peter. Don't you dare lie to God. I am not going to do it. I'm going to keep my life straight, keep my mouth shut. I'm not doing that. Rachel. Did you see the little goddess she's got? Aren't they wonderful? Hey, I just had a guy over here make me one just like one. You want one? And they spread throughout the camp. When you don't nip the sin in the butt, it grows. Joshua had no more problems with Achan. He had no more problems with that Babylonian garment. He had no more problems with that gold and silver. He was able to move on. We'll pick that up next day, Lord willing. Peter had no more problem with Ananias and fear. They gave him absolutely no problem. I guarantee there weren't many people that would lie about giving to God. You got a nip sin in the butt. 